Hello Wargamers, I'm Invasive Ramnus, and welcome to my second episode of the 6th edition Codex review for the Tau Empire. Today we're going to be talking about drones and marker lights. So to start off, drones work a little bit differently in this edition than they did in editions past. Instead of having to buy a drone controller, which opens up the option to purchase additional drones, now you just have the ability to take drones with units. They're just kind of built in. Uh, so you select to take um, up to two drones for a crisis suit or drones for an ethereal, ethereal um, and stuff like that. You still have to pay for the drone, uh, 12 points, but you don't have to pay for the drone controller and they don't take up a uh, hard point on your crisis suits, which is nice. But uh, on the drone list there are four drones, but one of them really is an imposter, uh, which is represented here by this missile pod, since I don't have a missile drone, since I don't have the new uh, new broadside kit yet. But the missile drone is something that a lot of people started off reading the codex and were just super excited about. Uh, a lot of people were were making lists where they had missile missile drones in their fire warrior units and units and all their crisis units and just all over the place. Um, and in the release day FAQ, GW said that um, missile drones are only available to broadside. So unfortunately, you can't take missile drones everywhere. So for that reason, I say that there's really only three drones on the drone list and the missile drone is just an imposter. He's really just a special unit upgrade for the broadside. So I'm not going to be talking about him in this episode. I will talk about him more in the broadside episode. Um, so you can look for uh, my, my thoughts on the missile drone at that time. So the remaining three uh, utility drones, as I call them, um, are the gun drone, the classic gun drone, which has a twin-linked pulse carbine, a shield drone, which I have here. I don't. I generally don't use the actual um, the actual shield drone model, just because all the ones I had were metal and their aerials always broke off. So I just convert them by clipping the uh, guns off of a gun drone. So I mean, that effectively makes a shield drone, right? And then the marker drone, which uh, now you can only get through the uh, stealth team box. So. Those are the three different drones you can get. The shield drone objectively got a little bit worse because it doesn't have um, the intimate protector rule. It used to be that that um, that shield drones were able to uh, always take hits for their controller, but now they're just part of the unit, so they always have to follow the same line of sight rules. They still have to uh, be in front of the, the person you're trying to protect. Um, and they also don't take on the unit's save and toughness like they used to. Uh, you used to be able to put one of these in a unit of broadsides and have it have a 2-up save uh, and a 4-up invulnerable save. It retained the invulnerable save, but it doesn't have the 2-up standard save anymore, so it's a little bit worse because um, you're always going to be taking against that invulnerable save with the shield drone. Still a really good option, though, because it, it uh, can protect you against heavy arms fire. The gun drone got objectively better. Uh, simply because uh, pulse carbines got better. They are now Assault 2 instead of Assault 1, and so, and, uh, so they can shoot They can shoot more. Um, and their, rain, their uh, range was... In, no, excuse me, that was, that's Fusion Blaster, no. So yeah, better because they got two shots now. And then the Marker Drone got better because it's a lot cheaper now. It's still the same, tw it's the 12 points just like these other two drones. Uh, and it does exactly what you would expect it to do. It shoots a marker light. It's not twin-linked. I've seen people say that it's twin-linked. Uh, it is not twin-linked. There is only one marker light on this drone. Um, I, I can understand the confusion simply because there, the gun drone is twin-linked, but marker drone is not twin-linked. Zero guns, one gun, two guns. So, who should be taking these drones? Well, it really depends on on the unit and how you're using them. Shield drones don't make a lot of sense for units like Fire Warriors because they're not going to be subject to uh, low AP fire, so that invulnerable save is really just as good as a standard save, which the gun drone has anyway. So, 
for a fire warrior unit, I, if you were to take drones at all, I would take a gun drone. Um, shield drones are better suited for things that are going to be taking heavy arms fire, like the trusty crisis suit. Um, that's where you're going to want to stick your shield drones, is with uh, crisis suits and things that are taking low AP fire. Gun drones, like I said, are better for uh, fire warrior units or um, things that really aren't going to benefit from having either a shield drone or a marker light drone. Uh, like Pathfinders. Pathfinders, it's kind of silly to take a marker light drone um, simply because they already have marker lights and a, a Pathfinder model is cheaper than a marker light drone. So, um, so really it's more cost effective to just increase your unit size Pathfinders by one. Um, Unless that unit is already saturated, then taking marker lights can increase your marker light capacity uh, beyond the the unit cap of the pathfinders. But really, um, it's it it's co it's not cost effective, and you would be better suited taking uh, two smaller units of pathfinders. I don't think there's much much use for having a full unit of pathfinders simply because they're such a large target, and they're all going to be shooting at one unit. So that's a lot of marker lights on one unit. Um, yeah, so, marker light drones are better suited for crisis suits, not pathfinders, because A, again, is not, not cost effective, but also crisis suits, more importantly, the crisis commander can take a drone controller, which allows drones in his unit to use his ballistic skill. So for ballistic skill 5, Crisis Commander, uh, the drones instead of being Ballistic Skill 2 are now Ballistic Skill 5. And while that doesn't make a difference for shield drones, because they're not shooting, it does make a difference for marker lights. Instead of uh, shooting at Ballistic Skill 2, they're shooting at Ballistic Skill 5, and suddenly they're a lot more reliable, uh, a much more reliable source of marker lights. Now that's probably more important for when you have just a Crisis Commander uh, with the unit and not um, in a unit of standard crisis suits because you're not getting that big of a benefit and you're probably still better suited using a shield drone. But if you were to have just a crisis commander with a drone controller, you could stick him with um, just a couple of marker light drones and have him float between units because he's an independent character. Or you could have him join a whole unit of marker light drones and gun drones and shield drones or or whatever you want to have. Um, and I will probably talk about that more in the gun drone squadron uh, entry to this series, but um, as a whole um, it has some interesting pros and cons. It might be a good strategy depending on who you're playing against. It might be um, a little points inefficient, but we can talk about that more later. So, another important thing to note is that the ballistic skill increase resulting from a drone controller is only applicable to gun drones, marker drones, and sniper drones. It's not applicable to missile drones, so if you uh, take broadsides and put a drone controller on them, it's not going to apply to their missile drones. It's not going to apply to the shielded missile drones of a Riptide either. Um, so I've, I've also seen confusion on that. It won't apply to interceptor drones. It won't apply to anything but gun drones, marker drones, and sniper drones. Um, and we'll talk about sniper drones in the sniper drone entry. Um, but, yeah. So, I will probably be uh, equipping my crisis suits with about one to one and a half shield drones per suit. Uh, obviously, you can't equip half a suit, but in a unit of uh, three, I'll probably equip four uh, shield drones, three or four shield drones. And... Uh, you, and then a crisis commander, I'm going to have him uh, probably outfitted with two marker light drones just for the, uh, the reliable source of marker lights. Um, yeah. The important thing to do is to just uh, make sure that your drones are thoughtfully selected in your unit entry. It's important not to buy too many drones because if you buy too many drones and not enough guns, then uh, you're not going to... Uh, really be effective. You're going to be durable, but not necessarily effective. Uh, for like a crisis unit team, I probably wouldn't recommend buying more than 
than um, one suit's worth of uh, drones per model, uh, which you can't technically do, but um, taking six shield drones on a unit of three crisis suits is probably a little excessive because on for the same price you could buy more suits and, and populate other other units. So um, probably between two and four drones per unit of three crisis suits is probably probably optimal. Um, and then there's a lot of places where you could take drones that you don't necessarily need to have drones either. Um, so again, just think critically about where think critically about your drone selection. Uh, drones are our gateway uh, army list entry that can uh, lead you to a path of excessive point usages and in upgrades and things that you don't really need. So just be do be conscious of that. Okay, that's that on drones. Let's move on to marker lights, which some of them, some of these models are going to stay out here. Um, obviously, the marker light drone, the Pathfinder, uh, the Fire Warrior is going to stay out here, and so is um, this um, marksman for uh, sniper drone team. He's going to stay out here too. Um, notably, something that's always really bugged me about this model is that the Fire Warrior Marksman is probably like 150% the size of a normal Fire Warrior. Like, this guy is the same height as this guy. Or, no, hold on. That's a better comparison. They're the same height, but this one's standing up and this one's crouched down like way tiny. He's tiny. Like, his stature. And so he's really probably like this tall compared to the this Pathfinder. He's probably a good, good. That's not a good angle for you to see what I'm comparing. But <laughs> anyway, yeah. So this model is way is not to scale with the rest of the Fire Warriors, and it really bothers me. But yeah. So marker lights got a huge improvement. Um, well, not necessarily a huge improvement, but there's they're way important and they're more accessible to the Tau army as a whole. So as you can see, there's lots of different ways. You can either take marker light drones, you can, t you can have units that just have network marker lights, which means that the unit itself can benefit from it, like this, the Sniper Drone Marksman or the Sun Shark Bomber. Both have networked marker lights. You can take Pathfinders, which are the staple uh, of marker lights. You will usually get most of your marker lights from Pathfinders. Or you can uh, upgrade your Fire Warrior units to have a... Uh, commander with a marker light too. And there are pros to cons to all of these, but before we can get into that we need to go over what marker lights do. They One marker light hit can be used per unit to increase their ballistic skill by one. Uh, that applies not only to standard shooting phase shots, but also to overwatch, overwatch and skyfire. So if you have a uh, sky uh, marker light hit on a flyer, you can use that to increase the ballistic skill of units firing at them. They no longer have to shoot at ballistic skill um, one. They don't, need, they don't need to be hitting on sixes anymore. They can be hitting on fives or fours or threes or whatever. Um, so that's huge. Um, and it's also really important for Overwatch, which I will talk about in a little bit. Um, you can use two marker light hits to remove cover fully from something. So it used to be that you would just remove one, one uh, point of cover per marker light, but now you just use two marker lights and it's completely gone. So if they have a three up invulnerables or a three up cover save, use two marker lights and it's gone. Um, so that can be really helpful for getting units out of um, cover, but also for hitting um, hitting skimmers and things that have. Um, cover saves through more artificial means than that, like that. Um, and then finally you can use a marker light shot to shoot a seeker missile, which um, a lot of units can carry now, including the broadside, which is a new addition. The broadside can now carry a seeker missile. And that, that can be uh, beneficial for helping taking out armored units. Um, and that, that, that seeker missile is shot at ballistic skill 5. So, pretty reliable. 
So uh, where should be you be getting your marker lights? Well, like I said, the Pathfinder is probably the best place to get it. Um, they are a relatively cheap source of marker light hits and you can get a whole unit of them and they can have uh, upgrades like, um, like drones um, and they also have their own special prototype drones like the Grav, um, Grav Inhibitor drone which uh, makes it more difficult to charge you. So they are um, by far the best way to get them in my opinion. Marker drones are good in some cases like when they're attached to a commander um, but what about the uh, previously frequent use of marker lights uh, in a fire warrior squad? Well uh, a lot of, like I said, a lot of people used to take them. Uh, I personally never did upgrade my units to have marker lights in them, but um, they can, there can be a temptation to take them. It's probably not worth the points to do that because you have to buy the, the Shazui uh, unit upgrade and then buy the marker light on top of that, so that actually turns out to be pretty expensive, especially compared to how re readily accessible they are in other forms, like the Pathfinder. So I would not recommend buying marker lights for a fire warrior squad. Other things like the sniper drone team and the the um, bomber and the sky ray all have marker lights, um, and those are things that I think are certainly assets to those units. Um, there, it's an asset to the sniper drone team that it has a marker light, um, and so if you have them in your army list, you should certainly capitalize on those entries. But I don't think they're necessarily something that you should. Um, put a whole lot of weight into in determining if you should take that unit or not. Um, don't take a sniper drone team just for the marker lights. Don't take a sun shark bomber just for the marker light. Take and don't take a sky ray just for a marker light. Um, and I'll talk more about the sky ray later. But as a whole, I think there it has kind of has its hands in a couple different buckets, and it's not necessarily the best choice for any of them. So um, marker lights from a sky ray. Uh, are not recommended by me, but um, yeah. So, sniper drone, the the secondary marker lights. Um, use them if you got them, but don't take them so that you have the marker lights. Get your marker lights from Pathfinders. Um, yeah, and so as a whole, um, these various different sources of marker lights can be used really effectively, um, especially in Overwatch. Um, like I said, you're probably going to be, most of your marker lights are probably going to come from one of these two guys, more so this guy. Um, if you haven't gotten that point by now, I think <laughs> I've been pretty redundant in saying that. But um, let's say you have a unit of Pathfinders near a unit of um, Fire Warriors or something, and the unit of Fire Warriors gets charged. Um, the supporting fire rule allows those Pathfinders to also fire Overwatch. So they can fire Overwatch first and hit up the unit with a bunch of... Here, let's put a Hormigon here. Okay, Hormigon's charging. Firework shoots at the Hormigon... Or, no, Pathfinder shoots at the, the Hormigon through Overwatch, gets a Marker Light hit on it, then the Firework can use that Marker Light to increase his Overwatch fire onto that Hormigon. So that can result in a lot of dead Hormigons or a couple dead tactical marines or whatever. Um, so this can be highly synergistic with, with um, the supporting fire special rule and again suggests that um, a, you know kind of a, a clustered deployment or a clustered um, formation throughout the game is favorable especially when there are pathfinders and then Units that are capable of putting out a lot of a lot of shots um, nearby. So I think that probably wraps up marker lights. Uh, there's not a lot to say about them other than they're great and you should take them in your army. Um, so to summarize, going back to drones, it takes a lot of time to move stuff around, especially with one hand. Jeez. Okay, so missile drones, imposters, don't believe the lies in the codex. You can only take them in broadside units. They're evil. They're really, they're, they could be good, but you can't take them in anything but broadside, so don't even, don't entertain that thought. I, I can feel you thinking about it, don't think about it. It's a lie. Okay, 
Shield drones, good for units that are going to be taking low AP fire, like crisis suits, gun drones, good for units that aren't going to benefit from shield drones or marker light drones, but could still use a little bit extra firepower, like fire warrior squads. So you could potentially put uh, a drone in fire warrior in a fire warrior squad. Marker drones, uh, potentially good in units of uh, gun drone squadrons, or in um, or as upgrade to a uh, high ballistic skill model with a drone controller. Marker lights as a whole. Get them from Pathfinders. You can use them if you get them from secondary marker light sources like sniper sniper drone teams, but don't depend on them. Take Pathfinders. And as a whole, uh, the that suggests that you should be clustered to uh, provide supporting fire. So that's my second video. Next one up is going to be on crisis commanders and crisis suits. I'll be talking about the loadouts and strategies associated with those models. I hope you tune, tune in. If you like this video and if you want to see more videos, please uh, like this video and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts on the strategies or commentary I provided here, leave a comment below. Thanks.